Hi, in this video, I'm going to be unboxing and testing the new 2025 Rydia 12 and 24 volt 50 amps continuous PWM, which includes a kill switch along with a lever activated controller. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is the box it came in. Just open it up here. First thing you get is these directions and we'll see how it goes as I'm going through this. And it's got some nice foam in here. Here's the main box. And I ordered the model that has the kill switch in it. And so here's your handle controller. And this is the exact same one, although it might be different inside that I used on my other project. And looks like you've got some mounting hardware here. And then this is the main box. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. Let's take this stuff out. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Well, it's pretty heavy duty. Let's move this stuff off to the side here. Okay, so this is heavy duty and it's wrapped, and it's got a huge heat sink on the bottom here, which is something new from their other models. Here's your kill switch. This is your five pin connector that goes from the speed control handle, and then of course, it's not labeled on the outside here, but probably in the directions somewhere. The, two of these are going to be your positive and negative, and then two of these are going to be for your motor, positive and negative. So, it's wrapped as well. So, let's take all this wrapping off and see what it looks like. Okay, I've removed it from the box and I've looked at the directions and the first thing I need to do is loosen up these four screws in the corner so I can remove the top lid. I've already done that so I'm just going to remove it and put it off to the side here. And then what you have exposed is the wiring terminal block and you can see all the connections are labeled and it's got nice six gauge wiring in there. And what I'm going to do also is remove, there's four really small screws that go into the corner of this mounting plate in here and I've already removed those and I'm going to show you what's underneath. Okay so this is what the circuit board looks like underneath the terminal block mount and as you can see it doesn't look like the typical inexpensive overseas PWM that we're all used to seeing. This one here actually has two additional heat sinks in there and you can see it's got upgraded electronics and you can look that up in the description I won't get into it here and then also what it does have in common with previous PWMs is you have these little quick connects here for both your display and the potentiometer as well as over here for your kill switch option so looking at it just like this it looks like this might be a quality PWM I also wanted to mention the installation kit that comes with it, the hardware. You've got some nuts and bolts in here and some cheap metal screws. And you've also got some nice track mounts and these two things here which I'm assuming will go into a track. This is a view of the lever controller for the PWM. It connects to the unit with this 5 pin connector and you have your digital display here that reads stop or off, forward and reverse and it should give a percentage of power or the voltage and when you're in this position right here which is the off or stop it's in the center detent so as you move away from there in a forward or reverse direction and then you come back to the stop you'll feel that click so that's how you're going to know that you're in the stop or off position and if you turn it over here 
you're going to see you have these four screws right here. So to get to see the internals, which I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these four screws and then this top section will pop off and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the internal view of the lever controller and as you can see here you have a potentiometer and by reading the data off it it is a 10K which is the typical size potentiometer used in PWMs and you have the blue and the white wire going to the first two tabs on the pot and then you have your red, black and yellow going to this meter here on the display and by testing this what I found is at the center detent of the lever you'll have zero which says off and then when you go forward and reverse you will get a percentage of the power as a readout on the display and that display also acts as the forward and reverse switch which you'll typically see as a separate switch on other PWMs. What I'm going to do here is show what the output readout looks like when you're running it from the off position to forward, reverse, and off again. So right now, if you can see it, it says off. I'm going to go forward, and you'll see it go up in percentages until it finally gets to 100. Back down to stop or off, and then in reverse. Again, a percentage of the output until it gets to 100%, then off again. Okay, everything's set up to do a dry run, so what I'm going to do is just go forward, back to stop, reverse, and back to stop. So everything works like it should. Now I'm going to go ahead and run it and pull the kill switch. Just going to go into forward, pull the switch, and it dies like it should. This is my test setup for the Bridia. As you can see here, here's the main unit. On the left, two gland nuts is where I have my power in and out from my 100 amp hour battery. The right two gland nuts go to my Minn Kota 30 pound thrust trolling motor, which is in the water. And because it's a test motor, I've set the speed to 5 for maximum use when you're running a PWM without actually doing the rewiring for it. And then this is the lever controller that is connected. Okay, so I've got the power hooked up and what I'm going to do is run the trolling motor 100% forward, back to stop, and then 100% in reverse and back to stop. And you'll be able to see the water moving around by the prop once I get to 100%, but you're not going to be able to see the lower values as I'm testing this. Stop 100% reverse and stop. So everything works as it should. Okay, after all the testing, there is a couple of comments I want to make. First of all, 
it seems to be a nice off-the-shelf unit where all you have to do is hook it up and you don't have to build a box or make any of the connections that you normally would with a PWM so if you're looking for something that's off the shelf or you don't have the skills or the time to put something together this might work for you now it weighs a little over three pounds and it's about six and a half inches in length seven and three quarters inches in width and about four and a quarter inches in height the one thing I do not like about this with this model and the kill switch it's located right underneath one of your motor connections and that kind of limits where you can mount it so you can pull this thing straight out or straight down those are your only really two options so what I would probably do is move this somewhere else maybe to the side or up on top or even change it with a magnetic type kill switch which will make it easier to use but for the money and how everything's already put together I think this is a pretty good little unit. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.